Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be here and convey my personal welcome to this 50th anniversary celebration of the University Honors Program. This wonderful event would not have been possible without the considerable efforts of Director David Furlow and his team at UHP, the 50th Anniversary Planning Committee, Vice Provost and Dean Carolyn Thomas and her team at Undergraduate Education, and our Campus Development and Alumni Relations Group, among others. Many of these individuals are here with us this evening, and I want to thank them all for setting up this occasion and getting us here. Thank you. <laughs> that said, I am not confused, but who are the real guests of honor? They are you, our UHP, DHC, and IS alumni. Your program and your university are honored that you're able to join us for this milestone celebration. I would understand if some of you are slightly puzzled by what I just said. Who is being honored tonight? And you might be asking yourselves, the alumni or the program? I'm afraid this is a bit of a metaphysical conundrum, one that I believe philosophers call as a technical term, chicken and egg problem. For the excellence and achievement of UHP, like its legacy programs, and uh, IS, uh, excuse me, um, the uh, integrated stage before it depend in great measure on the excellence and achievement of all the students, which in turn depend in great measure on the program, and so on, ad infinitum. In the words of someone, it's turtles all the way down. My suggestion is that we call a temporary truce and acknowledge that both the programs and their alumni are equally deserving of celebration. Please. Join me once again in applauding UHP, IS, DHC, and all our alumni. I have every confidence that my fellow speakers will present the historical and other facts about these valuable programs. Indeed, Jim Shackford already has begun on that road. And um, I, they all deserve to be put in the public record this evening. I'd like to do something a little different, namely share some higher level reflections on why these programs are so deserving of this celebration. Point of order, from this point on, I may at times for convenience refer to programs under the acronym UHP. Please know that when I do, I speak of IS and DHC also. I wanted to find a way to quickly communicate what seemed to me the essence of UHP. I came up with the short phrase, on the edge. My reasons are multiple, but not to worry. None of them are the sort of thing you would find in the National Enquirer, or even in any way unflattering. To take the most obvious reason first, our honors program is on the edge, more specifically the upper edge, with respect to the excellence and achievement of its students. As a group, UC Davis students are all very impressive. Each is different but each one possesses a record of high academic achievement, unique interests, talents, and areas of interest and expertise. And all of them have enormous potential. I know this firsthand as a professor of classics and comparative literature, and also from working with many students in my role as a provost. But as a proud alumnus instructor of a David's uh, Honors Challenge course, I know also that UHP attracts those students who stand apart even from their impressive peers by being especially capable, accomplished, motivated, and creative as young scholars. The phrase on the edge also points beyond merely academic success. For the work that our honor students do also has value in the world, helping to advance the edge of knowledge and understanding in a chosen area and quite often designed to benefit people or the planet. At the same time, participation in UHP means that one is on the edge of even greater accomplishments in the future. Here I would add that after 50 years of growth, evolution, and high excellence, UHP itself continues to be on the edge of yet greater things. There is, of course, a connotation of calamity in the phrase, on the edge. That too is relevant, for the program requires students to take intellectual risks. This means that they also take risks with respect to their academic careers at UC Davis, and possibly also their future. 
what I'm describing here sounds potentially dire, but as we all know, risk-taking can be one of the most important ingredients of the highest academic achievement. Note in this connection that no fewer than five of the past six university medalists have been UHP students, and before that, the recipients were more often than not IS or DHC students. That's quite a remarkable record. Risk-taking can also be essential for making a significant positive impact on the world, which happens to be a core goal of UHP, and for creating a career that is um, responsive to one's passions and ethical principles. Especially in their courses in years one and two, UHP students take the risk of thinking and learning in new ways. In years three and four, they take even greater risks identifying, proposing, and designing under faculty supervision their signature work project. The latter years especially exhibit one of the great things about the program. It allows exceptional students to be active participants in the shaping of their own education. Being on the edge is also a good description of where UHP and also individual student work are situated with respect to the traditional disciplinary landscape. As many of you will know, some from first-hand experience, UHP resulted in a formal merger of IS and DHC in 2013. Today, UHP proudly carries on IS's emphasis on interdisciplinary work. To put it another way, this means that honors education at UC Davis encourages students to pursue knowledge and discovery wherever it leads, including or perhaps especially on the edges or intersections between two or more disciplines. I know that as UHP, DHC, or IS alumni, you're very familiar with interdisciplinary approaches to education and research. Undoubtedly, you know how exciting they can be and how revelatory. But on the chance that some of you could use a brief refresher course on why these approaches are so valuable, let me drill down on this idea just a little bit. Being interdisciplinary is not merely a fascinating and fashionable academic orientation, not merely an activity that is highly esteemed by leaders in higher education and elsewhere, though both of these descriptions are certainly accurate. Interdisciplinary work is so widely and highly praised because it makes sense. In the last few decades, especially, we've become much more aware of the great disadvantages of addressing intellectual topics or major global problems through a single, narrow, disciplinary lens. Topics and problems we are now acutely aware have all sorts of different aspects and connections that extend far beyond what a single discipline can grasp. This means that if we want to make advances and develop solutions that do full justice to the topics or problems in question, and crucially, if we want to take actions that do produce new and perhaps greater problems that do not, excuse me, do not produce new and perhaps greater problems, it's imperative that our work escapes the limitations of disciplinary silos. In short, being interdisciplinary helps us approach issues and problems more holistically, and as a result, we have a better chance to understand those issues and problems more thoroughly and to find the right way forward. Indeed, Today, interdisciplinary work, a possible cross-disciplinary dialogue and collaboration, is widely seen as holding special promise for producing tomorrow's most dramatic advances in research and scholarship. My account of UHP wouldn't be complete if I, complete if I failed to acknowledge how much it contributes to all of UC Davis. By promoting students' excellence and cutting-edge work, the program's influence is felt directly or indirectly across the university. Our entire intellectual community is enriched and made livelier by our honor students. Their presence on our campus helps to grow the university's overall excellence by spurring other students to do their best work, keeping professors engaged and challenged, and increasing the attractiveness of UC Davis to prospective students and faculty. Here let me add that UHP is very much in line with our institutional vision, supporting all five top-level goals of the UC Davis strategic plan to boldly go. It has special relevance to the first two, 
The first goal formalizes the university's aim to provide an educational experience that prepares all students to address the needs and challenges of a diverse and changing world. The second goal expresses our aim to enable and support research that matters at the frontiers of knowledge across and between the disciplines in support of a healthy planet and the physical and social well-being of its inhabitants. I know, my short, I know my time is short, if not already long exhausted. We have more remarks and activities to come. So let me somewhat abruptly end my remarks by impressing upon you in the strongest terms that all of you as UHP, DHC, or IS alumni will always be members, valued members, of the Honors Program and the UC Davis family. What's more, we're now uniquely positioned to be exceptional in intellectual resources for UHP and the entire university. We very much hope that you'll take an active role for many years to come in shaping the future of these programs in UC Davis in contributing to the university's rising excellence and stature and in helping us to more effectively pursue our mission to benefit California, people around the world, and the planet itself. Again, to all of our UHP, uh, DHC, and IS alumni, thank you for being with us this evening. I urge you to stay connected to the university through the Cal Aggie Alumni Association and other groups and come back to visit us as often you can. Thank you very much.